Hey, we're Emily and Danny, and we made it from the Arctic Ocean all the way to the end of the Pan American Highway, Ushuaia, Argentina, with our cat Graham and our dog Sombrita. Now it's time to explore the end of the world, and lucky for us, my dad came down to visit. Hey, buddy! Oh. <laughs> Yes. Hey. <laughs> the wind is hey, unbelievable. How you doing, hey, what's up? This is awesome. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. It's like, I know, you did it. Uh, it was a surreal dream. <laughs> In honor of arriving to Ushuaia, this shot glass is from the northern end of the Pan American Highway. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> We're starting off this trip to hike to a glacier. It's called Vinciguera. It's about six miles with an extra side hike to Laguna Encantada. So we'll see how it goes. Let's traveled with Emily's dad here. It's a beautiful glacial lake, and the hike up was pretty tricky. Kind of steep, kind of muddy, but a really nice path. The sombrita's loving it. It's good you can bring a dog here. Just had a nice mate here with the view of the glacier. It's pretty good payoff for a hike like this, and compared to hiking up to a glacier in Colombia, quite easy. I think it was only 2,000 feet elevation. In addition to the payoff of the glacier after three miles, we should be coming up upon an ice cave. You gotta be pretty careful with this stuff. A week ago, a Brazilian died. He was also a van guy or a motorhome at least. Huge chunk break off the top and just lands right on the guy. And apparently he died right then. You gotta be really careful with these ice caves, especially now it's starting to warm up for the year. We're gonna try to go to that ice cave later this week, but here we're on the Vinci Guerra Glacier Trail, and the, the lake here is so blue, they call it Lagoon of Icebergs, Laguna de los Tempanos. Right up here should be the ice cave. We're here in water right underneath our steps. What do you think, Bob? First hike. Unbelievable, wonderful. <laughs> so Brita's loving it, but here in the water under our feet, it's a bit unsettling. There's the ice cave, huh? Let's get a slightly closer look carefully here. If you go in there, you could get crushed quite easily. That's the first little ice cave, and there's apparently a couple here. So let's continue on. Just getting a bit of an intro to the end of the world, Ushuaia. Oh, yeah, Emily's saying, look how blue that is in there. This is super hard packed glacier. It takes about 80 years for the snow to compress under the right conditions when it's more humid. Antarctica takes even 150 years for the light snow to compress into this ice, but it gets bluer and bluer as it gets more compact. Blue is a higher energy wavelength of light. That's the only thing that gets reflected. What a great hike. It's a pretty, it was pretty good. She's guiding us along this glacier. I'm so glad we were able to take her for a hike because it's been super hard to find places for her to be able to come with us with all the protected areas that I have here. But whoa, like, oh, an ice cave. These are so hard to find usually. And we just walked right up to one here. So cool. We just came down from there and I'm hoping underneath this whole mass of snow is a tunnel. Oh wow, look under this edge here. Oh, you guys, this is the sickest part yet. What a crazy little ice river we got. But compared to the other ice cave we're gonna see, this is nothing, right? We're probably gonna do that on Bob's last day here. We can already tell the guy's a Banff hiker. Look at this guy. Right. Seattle, Seattle City, <laughs> representing. 
That is pure ice. That's what I'm standing on right now. They're worried about me. But look at this beautiful little waterfall. All right, so that's the Vinci Guerra hike. Let's go head back to the van. Cheers. Cheers. End of the world. Okay, back to the van. Hey buddy, thanks for watching the van. Everything looks good, guys. Good morning. <laughs> we are going on a boat trip today. Going to go to see some sea lions, which I'm stoked about. And then we should also see some crazy birds, which will be fun. Not penguins yet. Penguins tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we needed a rest day after that glacier. <laughs> we thought it was a lot longer than we thought it was. It was about nine and a half miles, and we thought it was only going to be six and a half. Yeah, we got our steps in yesterday. <laughs> I found muscles that I never knew could hurt. <laughs> We're heading out with the company Patagonia Explorer on a small boat tour. This tour costs 9,000 pesos each using the blue dollar that is around $30 US. And if you want to find out how to get the blue dollar, check it out on this other video we posted. We're going to Isla de Pajaros, or Island of Birds, Isla de Lobos, or Island of Sea Lions, and we're going to a lighthouse and then heading over to Isla Bridges for a walk. so that they're easier to figure out what, we're, what we want. <laughs> Big day today, we're going to see some penguins, but not just penguins. We're paddling and hiking around the islands in the Beagle Channel. Since this is a full day, we've already found a spot for Sombrita. So this is where Sombrita will be staying for the day. Te gusta? to these remote places today we'll have to take a van, a paddle raft, hiking a bit, and a motorboat. I was expecting a box lunch, so I'm super impressed with these hot lunches in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. Ooh! Oh my goodness. This is good. Sweet. Like the squashies. The oh. squashy boys. Stoked? Yeah, I'm stoked. What's he got? Fish for the meat eaters and squash filled with quinoa and veggies for me. There's many ways to be happy. You can do whatever you like. You don't have to be ready. 
just gotta trust the right. You don't have to be scary. You just gotta follow the light. You're able to be happy. You can do whatever you like. Whoa, a whale skull. We're going to hike to the other side of the small island, then take a motorboat to Marticho Island, which is the home to the Patagonia penguins. Oh, look at him go to the shore. They're so cute to like waddling. Another epic day in the books. If every day was like this, my life would be so nice, and, but I would also be super duper tired. <laughs> I just can't believe we saw those penguins. I've been just so excited to see penguins since we planned on seeing them in Peru, but the wind ended up being too crazy for us to go out to the island where they were. So today was just such a dream come true seeing those penguins. Sombrita was at a dog sitter that we met up with. She is zonked. I think she had a really good day playing with dogs and going. they went on a walk up the mountain, so I'm glad she had a nice time. I am super tired. So we're going to cook in the van tonight with my dad and just hang out around his hotel. Graham, you're crazy. Where are you going? What are you doing on there, buddy? All right, today we're at the National Park, Tierra del Fuego in Argentina, of course. We got to put the cards in the post office, which was super sick. So yeah, we're just gonna enjoy the views here today. Send in postcards from the post office at the end of the world. How much postage? $800 worth. That'll get you to Spokane. And we're on the Spiegel channel here. All right, let's mail them off, huh? <laughs> Ushuaia, city view. Go to Spokane. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Got it. How about that, Bob? Awesome, man. I can go home now. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right, everyone? Yeah, you can't leave yet. <laughs> no, check out this post office. This is a really cool little dock building here. Hanging out over the ocean. And we're heading down the coastal trail because my dad doesn't trust us anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But we did we did walk, walk three extra miles than we thought the other day. So <laughs> we're going to go on a nice leisurely walk. Cool we found. OK, Emily, I want to see you really go for it. Whoa! Yes! Skills! <laughs> so random. Man, we found such a cool little spot there with the rope swing. Beautiful view. With the Beagle Channel. We're gonna head back to the van and go check out the other part of the National Park, which is pretty significant for us because that will be the official end of the Pan American Highway. Super stoked. Basically, just a sign, but it's a really good sign. Here in the National Park, almost to the end of the Pan American Highway, a little Sammy stop. <laughs> You know, living in a van, one of the advantages. You have your kitchen everywhere, 
good times. Good times. Good times. <laughs> but I'm thinking, yeah, let's do green tea, Emily, mate for me, coffee for pops. End of the road is coming. We're gonna be there in one more mile. It's down the end of this road at Tierra del Fuego National Park. So excited to share it with you guys. We started telling the travel time 30 hours. Travel time to the end of the road, and now it's just one minute left. It's just been this long line across the whole two continents and to come to the end of it is insane. But you know what? Life is best on dead end highways. <laughs> and if you've come to the end of the road, stay a while. I think we did a lot of appreciating the journey along the way. Four years is a crazy amount of time. <laughs> and I just don't think it would feel the same if we hadn't gone all the way to the Arctic Ocean. I'm so glad that the finish line is such a destination here. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming to visit. Absolutely. Here we go, right now. 0.3 miles. Oh my God. The van's shaking apart. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not working. Oh no, we only have one engine light on right now. Um, we've only had another one this morning. We just have 500 feet left. Whoa. Well, let's park here and we'll walk over. Check out the goal, the end of the world sign over here. So we have run out of water here at the end of the road, at the end of the world. And Emily and I were jiggling the tank. I don't know if we're gonna make it. We probably have a whole nother 500 feet. Um, morale's high, health is low. 30 second travel time. The repairs are necessary. I didn't know this was such a big deal to people other than driving down here. <laughs> so everyone's captivated by this sign here. Oh, here ends the Route 3, officially. This is the official end of Route 3. Yeah, when does that mean? Alaska is 17,848 kilometers away. Can someone tell me what that is in miles so I know what it means? <laughs> oh, well, Alaska. Just in general, Alaska. So I guess the ticker tape parade is late today, but uh, still quite the accomplishment making it here. We're stoked. What about one of those one of those pieces of tape that they have whenever you cross the finish line? Yeah. Good job, Emily. Good job. Boom. Wow, Graham, you made it from the northern end of the Pan American Highway to the very bottom. We're proud of you, little boy. You never killed anything the whole way. And Sombrita started out in Mexico. Buena chica. <laughs> We made it from the beginning of the Pan American Highway at the Arctic Ocean all the way down here to the southernmost point in Argentina. Thanks for coming to the graduation party, Bob. Being a port town, Ushuaia is perfect for seafood, specifically Sentosha or King Crab. Luckily for Danny, my dad is here to split one with him. <laughs> Look at this crab. Yes, yes. That'll do, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> Good luck, guys. <laughs> yeah. Look at this thing. Okay, okay. Are you scared? Yes, yes. Well, I'm a little scared. I don't think it's gonna attack. But yeah. You never know. All right, it's time to head out. This is gonna be an epic hike up that canyon right there. 
to an ice cave. If all goes well, at any point, there could be conditions that lead to us not making it with ice, mud. It could be a really difficult one, but the dog can come, which is awesome. All right, let's go. Technically, this is another prohibited hike that we're gonna do. It's somewhere super cool, so. <laughs> They've built a nice stair here for climbing over the fence. <laughs> oh yeah, what's the dog gonna do? She'll go under. Muy bien. Cañadón de la oveja. Here we come. We're coming up to the second warning here. It might seem silly stern warnings, but honestly, a guy died here two weeks ago. He was going into the ice cave. Huge piece of the roof comes off. We're gonna have to be super careful, and that's why there's so many warnings here. So now we've made it to the part where we're leaving the forest. You see down there the glacier. I'm not sure yet where the ice cave, the deadly, deadly ice cave is, but we're gonna do some switchbacks up here and go all across that, which our van friends, when they did it, that was all snow and they said they needed crampons, you know, spikes you put on your boots. At some point we'll deviate from the official trail and head over to that ice cave. Wow, what a cool hike. We're all just giddy with excitement and stoked that it's really not that hard. It's steeper than 45 degrees, this scree. Imagine if there was snow on it. Ooh, that'd be super scary. <laughs> I love getting my feet a little wet and finding a way across the rocks so I don't fall. It's a little bit more fun. Wow, this hike, every step is just even more beautiful than the last. I can't believe it. Okay, Sombrita, you wait here. You can't go past this little thingy. So you wait here, Sombrita. Oh my God, that's so gorgeous. These waterfalls over here. Oh, look how far we've come. This is really kicking our butts right now because I don't think we were expecting such a hard uphill here towards the end. But there's the glacier in sight. And look at this steep path. Oof. Definitely a tricky hike. But super beautiful. These waterfalls rushing down there. Looks like Switzerland. I assume. <laughs> what do you think, somebody? Oh, she loves it. Yeah. Wow, I'm excited and scared to see what's over this hill. Look at this glacier. We're gonna have to figure out where this ice cave is. It is more uphill. <laughs> this do not enter sign marks the entrance. We've spotted the path. There's a little boot path along there. A trail heading up. Challenging going up that hill. Should be right up there. All right, so this is the beginning of the sketchiness. There's definitely a river under here somewhere. So, we're following the established track. It's good. Okay, Bob's testing it. All right. That's a river right there. This is honestly the hardest trail to find. We've been on in a long time, but you can see here just a slightly different texture in the rocks and it looks like it continues up to the right side here. And then it just disappears, so. That's gonna be the spicy part. So Emily's the first one making it up there. Oh, it is so cool. Right there. Maybe a quarter of it. But already, the craziest thing I've ever seen. Look, look how big it is. What? It's huge. Oh my God. It's crazy. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah, that was so dope. Jeez! This is gonna be epic! Oh, that was not an easy hike! Look at this! You can see the water way down there. We were at basically sea level, 300 feet when we started. This is the biggest payoff ever for a hike. It just feels like this magical hidden place. I can't believe this is natural. Yeah, those ice caves the other day were just like a little dinky thing. This has this crazy pattern caused by layers of ice and dirt somehow rotating to create this like cinnamon bun in there. 
But we got the dog on the leash. We are not letting her go inside. It just looks like an enormous jet engine or something. Look at the sheer size of this enormous, enormous ice cave. That is the scariest thing I have ever seen. Oh my freaking god. What? How insanely gorgeous is this? Well, I think on the way up, all of us were kind of thinking it wouldn't be this spectacular. It would be collapsed. It would be gone. It wasn't the right season or something. What a natural wonder. We'll check the stats here, but this was probably five miles, 3,000 feet elevation gain to get here. There is danger of collapse and constant fall of fragments of ice and rock. Just one of the most epic rewards for a hike that I've ever had. When uh, it was pretty silent, you can hear the cracking of the ice and things falling. So there's no way I would ever step foot in there. Glaciers and ice and stuff like that, especially when it gets warm out, those things are gonna fall. I can't believe how beautiful this is. I like, whenever I saw it coming over the ridge, I thought that thing is 300 times bigger than I thought it was. So blue, so beautiful. I feel so lucky that our friends showed us about this place and we were able to come and experience it, hike this far, especially with my dad. Good job. Ow, ow, ow. This is the most mesmerizing shape. It's like looking at one of those people trying to hypnotize you, right? Yeah. Look deep into the cave. What? And there's some light in there. So if we climb up above, maybe there's a hole back in there we could look down into. I'm not going to get closer than this. This is the beer I chose. We got a porter, Siete Cholas, from Salta, Argentina. Dark and lively. This or is Bob's favorite beer. Extra stout. I've got artisanal pampa, la dorada. Yes! yes. Congratulations, guys! Ha ha! better. Heaven. Heaven. <laughs> Sombrita is not stoked, we're not letting her free. But it's worth it because of that thing right there. And what's on the menu? Peanut butter jelly time. You liking your beer? Delicious. Best Guinness I ever had. You want to go check out the top? Yeah, let's do it. One more picture. <laughs> okay, looks like your dad's on the way. I'll join him. That gaping mouth is making us all curious as to how this formed, what's up above here. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, this is looking like the top entrance to the cave. Look at that. Just a huge hole in the earth where I guess the river is sinking these layers and creating that, that pattern cinnamon bun spiral look at this whoa there it is the top to the cave so really what I'm standing on that's probably glacier under there too but it's not a big chasm inside so it's not really dangerous 
You can see in there, definitely there's some pieces that have fallen not too long ago. So that's why it's super dangerous to go in there in this season, especially this is spring. Go in there in winter, you're taking a chance, but probably gonna be okay. Well, just in case anybody's worried about Sombrita's feet, we're gonna show you. We do have the proper attire. Kieta, Kieta. She doesn't love it. She's walking normal. As you can tell, she's not. She's not a She's fan. not accepting. Yeah. Okay, Sombrita, okay. corre. Here, have her walk with you somewhere. Else. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. And we got the back paws too. Wow, she's actually doing pretty well with them, huh? dad's Tilly hat and it's got a lot of miles on it and wanted to give it to you last year but I just uh, I felt like I had to put the miles on it myself. So I carried this every day. On the, the today? Every wow. day, yes. So I figured the today last... Today is definitely the day. Yeah, yeah. First place key. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> this is awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Oh. Well, some reason wants hugs. Yeah, so that was that. So you've got other adventures to do. Yeah. And uh Maybe it'll go to Antarctica. Oh, it's so hard to leave this place, but all good things must come to an end. And we have no more peanut butter jellies and I want some food. <laughs> so we're heading back down to the van. Alright, we're almost there. I think I can almost see the end. Emily's taking the quick way. Those look nice. <laughs> oh, Van sided over there, just poking out of the trees with that horse. Van Ho! Looks like Graham got the window cover down. The van's good. Are you playing, my boy? You had a good day? We walked forever. I don't think Graham would have liked that hike, but he definitely likes going outside right now. All right, well, we better get out of here and go get some sustenance. <laughs> Most epic hike ever by twofold. Thank you guys so much for coming along with us on our first wander around Ushuaia. We're so excited to show you the end of the world. If you like this video, let us know in the comments, like and subscribe. And if you want to support us a little bit more, head over to our Patreon. See you guys next time.